In this video, we are going to explore the analysis capabilities within ArcGIS Online. Obviously, there are many capabilities we won't be able to cover in this video. However, there are free resources available for you to check out and courses for you to partake. So check out the resource link in the story map. Back to our map we have right now, from a visual inspection, we can see that areas with high concentration of people age 70 and over do not have food banks located in their neighborhood. This might put stress on the surrounding food banks in the area as it needs to accommodate for the surrounding neighborhood. Food banks seems to be highly concentrated in the downtown core, but maybe that's not entirely effective since the concentration of seniors are not living there. To get a summary of how many food banks are within each neighborhood, we can run an analysis tool called Summarize Within. We can access the tool by going into Analysis. Under Summarize Data, the tool Summarize Within is what we want. So in the Summarize Within configuration panel, we need to indicate that we are using a polygon to summarize and that the polygon is our Toronto neighborhood 70 plus layer. Then we choose a layer to summarize, which are the food banks. You can also summarize a particular column within the layer to summarize. However, we don't have a number column or an integer type column. So that means we don't have the option to summarize that. But it would be interesting if we had numbers on how many people each food bank serves. That way we can summarize by the sum of total people served by all the food banks that are within a neighborhood boundary. You can also group data by a column of your data set. For example, we can group it by communities. However, it's not commonly used and there's no need here, so we can skip this as well. Finally, we need to give our layer a name because what happens is it does generate a new layer and I want to highly emphasize that it is important to rename your layer to the context of what your analysis has done because as you keep doing analysis, you, you will generate a lot of new layers. So let's summarize food banks within Toronto neighborhood and your with your initials. Save it in the folder you are working with and run analysis. So as the tool runs, let's hop into a help document for ArcGIS Online. Each analysis tool has their own help document with a description of the tool, a visual showing how the tool works. And as a visual learner, I find just the simple visuals super helpful. There's also topics such as when you would use an analysis tool, the limitations, how the tool works, as well as similar tools that are within ArcGIS Online. For example, I could have used a tool called Aggregate Points to find a summary of the point count and maybe use the tool Summarize Nearby to help with the analysis. So there are many good information within a help document that I encourage you to check out. And now going back to our map, the tool has finished running and a new layer has generated. So let's turn off the old layer to view the result of the analysis. So this layer is using right now a proportional symbology. You can see that there are polygons where there are no purple dots and that would just mean there are no food banks within that neighborhood. Now polygons with a bigger dot just means there are more food banks in that neighborhood. I can also filter the neighborhoods where the count of their point is zero. So this would mean that I'm filtering out polygons without any food banks in that neighborhood. So if I apply that and bring back the other layers we can use the analysis component of layer generated as a new visualization showing and highlighting areas without food banks. Going back to our conversation where we talked about neighborhoods with high concentration of seniors don't seem to have food banks within that neighborhood, that might pose an issue but maybe transportation in that area is good so that the flow of people who require the delivery of food is possible to have that food bank located outside of those neighborhoods. 
So let's focus our attention on the east end of Toronto here at the neighborhood called Guildwood where the percent of people 70 and over are around 21% of that population. And in this neighborhood, we can see that there are around five food banks surrounding that neighborhood. And where these food banks are within a neighborhood, there are roughly nine to 11% of 70 and over people. We can determine how much coverage the food bank facility have at their location from a five to 10 minute drive. To run such an analysis, we can use the drive time area tool. Here in the help document, it says that the drive time area tool uses the Esri service area to calculate areas within a specific time or distance using the street network here. So to access the tool, we go back to our map, hit analysis, go into use proximity, and select the create drive time areas. Here in the drive time area, pick the layer you are interested in. So I'm interested in the food bank's drive time area. And I want an interval of five and 10 minutes. And you can see there's other options to measure, for example, driving a truck, or the distance, walking, and even rural driving time, which is not the case for Toronto. You need to be aware of the type of format you have for the minutes. Then it asks if you use traffic or not. And to be honest, I've been out on the roads recently and even though everyone is in quarantine, traffic is still not that great during rush hour. So I'm going to check that. So I can use the smart traffic analytics to determine my drive speed. As for travel direction, we're traveling away from the food bank facility. And where drive time area might converge, we make sure that the area would only overlap and not dissolve or split, just because we want to know which drive time area polygon will correspond to a particular food bank point. Finally, let's give this analysis resulting layer a new name. So right now, I'm actually quite happy with the default name we were given. You have an option to include the street names that the drive time analysis was based on. Um, we don't need that information. We just need to see the coverage. So we won't check that off. Make sure it's saved in the folder of your project. And because we're only interested in these five points, I'm going to make sure that my map view is zoomed with just the five points shown in the map so that we can just use the current map extent to run the analysis. So make sure this is checked as well. Let's hit run analysis. As the tool run, the result will generate polygons for the point locations. One polygon will represent a five minute drive from the food bank and another polygon will represent the 10 minute drive. With five points, this tool will create a total of 10 polygons. And these polygons will show you how far a five or a 10 minute drive will get you from a food bank location. Let's take a look at the result of our analysis tool. Going into the legend, we can see that the lighter purple means a five minute drive time and a darker purple means a 10 minute drive time. So looking at it visually, we can see that the drive time of these food banks do make a lot of coverage. So they are in good location. And I know that for a fact because I live quite close to the neighborhood Gilwood. And I know that there's a major road that runs diagonally and parallel to the Ontario Lake. And let's see if I turn off all the layers here, we can see that Kingston Road, which is the road I was referring to, runs straight across the neighborhoods and connects those food banks. So if I change my base map to a imagery, where is that right here? turn those layers off again, we can see that this road, which was Kingston Road, is a wide network of road with six lanes of traffic. So that is the reason why that these food bank location might be all right for catering to neighborhoods such as Guildwood with a 21% of people over the age of 70. So going back to our initial question, which was, 
Are there enough food banks delivering food in the city of Toronto? Well, the answer would be yes, that is the case because we can see that these food banks are covering areas where food delivery are high in demand for these seniors. Now taking a step back, mind you, these are just my humble analysis based on the information I have. We could do more analysis by using dissemination area, which Statistic Canada define as a neighborhood with a population of 400 to 700 people. So instead of using these Toronto neighborhoods that comprise of at least 10,000 people. Or maybe information on the capacity of services these food banks provide and the resources they have like personnel working, volunteers, and trucks that they might have. These are information that can change the answer of mine. So I'm sure as journalists you would have more ability than me to find these information and utilize the many tools that we have for analysis in ArcGIS Online to its fullest extent. In the remaining videos of the series, I'll be showing you how to share these maps you have created to your audience member. And there are many different ways based on your comfort level with the software. To recap what we did in this video, we used the tool Summarize Within to see how many food banks are within a neighborhood. And then we used the filter tool to filter out the resulting Summarize Within layer and filter it out basically isolating neighborhoods with a count of zero points, meaning no food banks. And then we did a drive time analysis on the food banks that were surrounding a neighborhood called Guildwood, which didn't have any food banks to see if the surrounding food banks has a delivery coverage of five to 10 minutes drive away. Now that's just skimping a bit of the analysis tools that are included in ArcGIS Online. Obviously there can be a lot more to cover and a lot of different tools that you can use, which is why I've included links to documentation of other tools and other lesson plans for you to learn from. In the next couple of videos, we are going to explore different ways to share your maps. So see you then. Mm -hmm.